Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to Rustic and Lace DIY. For those of you who are new, my name is Brenda and this is my Oliver and we are so happy you stopped by today. And if you're returning, welcome back. I am so appreciative of all of you who support my channel and come back every week. So this week I'm gonna do a bee themed video all because I had a viewer request it. I'm sorry it took me so long, but things have been a little hectic as you know in my life. So. With all that being said, let's get to crafting. Okay, DIY number one. So for this DIY, I created a saying with my Cricut and then I also printed out a circle. Then I'm going to use one and half of these uh, pieces of rope from Dollar Tree. One of these plastic eggs this sign from Dollar Tree, as well as my Waverly chalk paint in the color ivory and my antique wax and some of these bees that I got from Amazon. I will try and link those in my Amazon store in case you're interested. So I go over this sign. I do a really thick dry brushing um, of the ivory and then here I am just going through with my antique wax and doing some distressing all around the sides and then I do a little bit more in the middle as well. And once I am done with that, I'm going to, um, I'm sorry, I don't remember what I did. <laughs> there I go. I'm going to cut that apart and cut off this, um, this ribbon because I could not figure out how to untie it. And then I am going to take off all of this yucky stuff plasticky stuff that's on the egg and it was really hard at first trying to figure it out but once I got it figured out it came off really easy the um the pink I'm oh, sorry the blue and the white stripes there they are there's hooks in the middle of that egg and they're hooked on it so uh, once I got it all figured out it came off really easy but there I'm showing you those hooks there so I then take my scissors and I'm cutting off all of the stuff around the edge but it was uh, the angle was kind of weird for my scissors in the middle um, those middle pegs so I took my wire cutters and I am just cutting that and they cut came right off so once I had it all trimmed up I am taking my um, rope from Dollar Tree and I am just hot gluing it all around the edge of that egg. Now you might not have to do that if you recreate this. You might be able to just weave back and forth like I do, but I just didn't want to take a chance of you being able to see that plastic. So once I had that all done, I'm just taking my uh, rope there and I'm hot gluing. Now I'm hot gluing on the plastic and the, the rope, but I would just use Pla um, the hot glue on the rope itself that way you can squish it together and it can hold but once I got all the way to the top I'm just using my last little piece there hot gluing it down I'm going to trim it off and then you just want to hold it down for a few seconds just to make sure that it adheres together after that I took my circle and I'm just putting it right in the middle there and then oh my goodness wait till you see what happens so I'm hot gluing this onto my sign and it fell out of my hands and I had a hot glue string mess there. Uh, so I had to work on it for a little bit. But once I got it all straight, uh, cleaned up, I took my decal that I printed and I am just adding it to my sign. And then I'm going to take the next one, which says honey, and I'm going to add it right below the farm fresh. And I will try and have the, um, the fonts listed in my description box for those two. Then I'm taking these bees and I'm just hot gluing some onto that beehive. And I do end up adding a couple. My husband thought I needed a couple that look like they're going in and out of the holes. So I did that too. But here I am just taking my hot glue and I'm trying to uh, make it look like honey was dripping out of the... Um, beehive because this beehive is so full of honey so I took my paint and I'll have that color in the description box but um, I anytime I could see some of the hot glue I just went and painted it and I just thought that was so fun because it looks like there's uh, honey coming out of that beehive because they were so busy creating honey <laughs> 
So then I took some of this braided gold cord that I've had in my stash for a while and I used that as the hanger and then I just created a couple of bows and stuck them right where those holes are and there it is you'll have to let me know what you think about this if you think it needs anything more i kept looking at thinking i want to do something more to it but i couldn't figure out what it needed so let me know if you have any ideas but i think it came out pretty cute um you have to let me know what you think about it as well okay guys i want to start off by saying thank you all so very much I finally reached my 5,000 subscribers and it's all because of you and I appreciate every one of you that has subscribed, commented, liked, all of that fun stuff. So in order to show my appreciation, I'm going to have a giveaway of some goodies. So here are the rules. Number one, I'm sorry, but you do have to live in the United States all because of shipping per cost. Number two, need to like and comment on this video. Number three, you need to comment between March 2nd today and March 8th, and I will have the drawing on March 9th. I will notify the winner by commenting on your comment, so make sure you're paying attention to your comments. YouTube will notify you when I comment, so make sure you're paying attention because you will have 48 hours to email me. I will have my email in the description box below. If I don't hear from you, I will pick another winner and I will do the same thing until we have a winner who has contacted me. Then I will announce it all on YouTube, on my community page, as well as Instagram. And I'm thinking about having a second drawing uh, giveaway of just some calendars. So let me know if you think that would be great. If you guys are interested in, I'll do that as well. So again, thank you guys all so very much. I really appreciate it. Now on to DIY number two. So for this DIY, I'm going to use a craft stick. And then these um, fence sticks I got off of um, uh, walmart.com. And I got that last summer. So if I can find them, I'll link them in my description box as well. So those bees, then that crate from Dollar Tree. I got these flowers um, from Hobby Lobby. They are $3.99 plus 40% off. This flexible tie, which I recommend not using. And uh, this bush of mixed berry or berry mix I got from Walmart this last summer. And then these... Um, what are these greenery bouquets that I got from Dollar Tree this last summer as well. So I'm going to start off by using my plaster paint and I'm going to paint the fence post, the um, craft stick and that crate with that color. And then I'm taking my Waverly Antique Wax and I am just doing some distressing. Now, if you don't like distressing, you know, make this your own. If you're going to recreate it, do what you like, what makes you happy. Um, I love this look, so that's why I do the distressing. So once I had all of those fence pieces done, um, I am going to do the crate as well. And I did do the craft stick because I just thought if anyone sees the back part of it, I want it to all look the same. So after that, I took my little fence pieces here and I'm just hot gluing them uh, to the edge of the crate. And I started on the outside so I could work my way um, I wasn't quite sure how far apart to keep to make them. So here I am just lining them all up and then I am going to, uh, once I got them to where it looked like they were about even, I took the rest of them off, left the middle one there and I'm just hot gluing the middle one on. And then I'm gonna take two more and I'm gonna work on the left side of it and um, just kind of lining them up so they look about even and then hot gluing them on and then I do the right side as well. Then after that I turn it over and I'm using that craft stick on the back. And then yes, there's my little Oliver came to say hi to me again. <laughs> after that I took my um, paint there that I got from Apple Barrel. The colors will be in my description box and I'm going to hot glue. Um, well, I painted those little flowers, two, two of those different flowers there and I'm going to hot glue them onto my little fence. And I'm just kind of placing them here and there. No real specific um, locations, just kind of what I thought looked good. And then after I have those all hot glued, now guys, I use this flexible 
tie that I got from Dollar Tree last year in the garden section. And I thought it would look great because it was green. It was, you know, kind of puffy. I thought it gives that 3D effect. I really thought it would be good, but it just kept popping up off of the hot glue. And I kept having to add more hot glue. And so because of that, I would not recommend using it. Um, I was thinking about it afterwards and what would have looked really good is um, some puffy paint. If I would have had green puff paint, that would have been perfect. Um, other thing you could use is like uh, felt, green felt, or even some of the floral wire. Green floral wire might have worked too. Um, no, not the wire, the stems, like the, the ones that you can use as a stem. So then after that, I took some more of that uh, tie. I cut it down and put it in, uh, folded it in half, and then I'm hot gluing them to look like the petals. Uh, after that, um, when I was all done, you could see it, some of the hot glue since I had to use extra hot glue. So I do take one of my Arteza paint markers and kind of paint all of it to kind of make it all look the same color. So after that, I took some of these bees, I uh, hot glued one onto one of the flowers, and then I hot glued a bigger one onto one of the fence posts there. And then after that, I'm just going to take some floral foam, and I am just going to use hot glue to adhere it to the inside of that crate. And then I just cut down another piece so that it all fits in there. Then I'm just taking this um, berry pick, and I am just... Um, putting it all over. Now, I probably should have added some moss to it because you can kind of see the floral foam a little bit. So if you recreate this, I would suggest adding some moss to that or some rocks or something to help cover up the floral foam. And then after that, that's all there was for this. And I really think it came out adorable, even with all my issues <laughs> with that uh, flexible tie. I love it. And you have to let me know what you think about this one in the comment box below. If you'd like to follow me on social media, you can find links to the, my social media accounts in my description box in the link tree in my description box. <laughs> okay, here is DIY number three. So for this DIY, I use my plaster uh, chalk paint. By Waverly and this wall decal that I got from Dollar Tree as well as this uh, wood plank that I got from Dollar Tree as well. So I start off by giving that um, wood plank a good painting of my plaster chalk paint and then I um, dried it and once it was all dried I'm going to take that wall decal and I recommend doing this anytime you use a wall decal is you want to just trim around as much of that plastic um, as you can. So I'm just trying to trim around the images so that you see very little of that plastic because when you don't do that you just can see that plastic all around and it just doesn't look very nice. So once I had it all trimmed I'm just going to take it and adhere it to that board. Now this the glue on it is pretty good, so I, I didn't feel like I needed anything else on there. Then I'm going to take my antique wax and I am just going to distress it all around the edge. And then I do distress some uh, throughout the, the middle of the sign as well. And then after I am done with that, I am going to take some tape. I'm going to wrap it around the um, hanger that was on there and I'm going to thread it right back through. And then I'm going to take some more twine and wrap it around the top and the bottom. And then I'm going to add some uh, solo wood flowers. If you're new here, I just want to say welcome. I am so glad you stopped by today. If you like home decor on a budget, thrift flips, holiday decor, gift ideas, then I would invite you to hit that subscribe button, become part of our family. And if you like the video, make sure you give me that thumbs up and then comment. Let me know you're new here. I love to get to know you guys. And yeah, and if you're not new, hit that like button and, and comment because that does help my channel grow. So with all that, guys, 
thank you very much. <laughs> I'm stumbling over my words today, you guys. I think that three weeks, half of the time I was not doing anything. And so I'm trying to uh, get back in the groove here. Uh, so here I am. I'm just um, hot gluing the the twine to it and then I'm adding the solo wood flowers if you are interested in solo wood flowers they are always have good sales and I will have a link to that in my description box as well I love these flowers I think they are beautiful they come in all kinds of different colors and you can even get the dye to dye them yourself so here you are there it is and it is I think really sweet and really simple you'll have to let me know what you think about this one as well Okay, DIY number four. So for this DIY, you guys, oh, okay. So I used one of these candlesticks I got from Hobby Lobby, these magnets from Dollar Tree, the chalkboard from Dollar Tree, and then I'm gonna use one of my uh, transfers here from Chalk Couture, which I am a Chalk Couture designer. If you're interested, let me know. I can give you more information about it. And then I'm using my bumblebee chalk paste. Now that knot on that twine was so hard to get out. So I decided to cut it while my finger was in the way and I got my finger and I thought, Oh, I can keep going. No, it, next thing I know I had blood everywhere. So, um, <sighs> so I tried to wrap it, hold it for a while, put bandaid it, nothing was working. It just kept bleeding. And my husband ended up coming in and taping it for me. So you'll see a big bandage on my finger here in a few minutes, but once that was all done, I just painted that bottom of that chalkboard with my Waverly chalk paint and the color white. I did the same on that candlestick. And then I started doing one on the, um, the magnet. And I was like, shoot, wait, I don't want this to be white. I want this to be yellow. But I should have went with it because I painted the other ones yellow. But as you can see, you can still kind of see the darkness. And I did have to paint this like two or three times. But when I painted the white one, it was so bright. And so I wish I would have painted all of them white, dried them, and then um, painted them yellow. So if you recreate it, that's what I would suggest. <laughs> then I take this transfer and I'm just cutting it. It does have lines there where you can cut it so, because they're meant to be cut. And then I am going to uh, fuzz it since this is my first time using this transfer. You want to fuzz it so that it's not so sticky because what happens is if it's too sticky and you place it on your surface, once you're done and you go to pull up, it will, um, you, it can stretch it because it's sticking too much. So once I have it all on there, I'm going to take my chalk paste in the color Bumblebee and I am just using my little mini squeegee here to uh, adhere it to my transfer and it is that easy and then I just take it and uh, scrape up all the excess and yeah then I just make sure to wipe off that squeegee and close the paste so that it doesn't dry. After I get that all done I am going to show you the beautiful reveal which I love this part because it looks so nice. There it is. So after that, I took my little candlestick. I'm adding some hot glue and then I'm adding the chalkboard to the top. I am sorry this is not in frame, you guys. I had to move my camera holder to take it to Oregon with me and now I'm having to play with it again to try and get it right back into the best position. So here I'm taking those magnets and I am just hot gluing them onto the upper corner of my chalkboard there. And then after I get that all hot glued on, I am going to hot glue a B onto it as well. Now I was having a heck of a time trying to figure out how I wanted to finish this. I think cutting my finger didn't help because it was really throbbing and I just wanted to get through with this. Um, so I knew I had this ribbon, so I decided to cover the paint, the part that I just painted <laughs> with that ribbon. I don't know why I painted it, but anyways. <laughs> so then um, I'm just hot gluing it to the back. And then after that, I added a B to that bottom corner there as well. And then I was still trying to figure out what do I want to do with this. So I took a couple little daisies that I had. I think I got them from Hobby Lobby last year and I added them by that B. And then I'm just going to add another B to each one of the, up, the other corners. And 
Um, I do also take some jute twine and make a little bow and put that in the middle. Now, when I showed my husband, he told me, don't get offended, but I don't think it's creative enough, which is probably right. It probably isn't. But at that point, my finger hurt. I didn't care. And uh, so this is what you got. So let me know if you think you could have done something different. I kind of have some ideas of what I should have probably done, but I still think it's cute. I don't care what he says. <laughs> and yeah. So you have to let me know what you think about it as well. So that is all there was for this one. If you have any questions at all about Chalk Couture or would like to join the monthly Chalk Couture Club, which is $20 a month, you get an 8x10 transfer, you get three pace and a squeegee. Um, just let me know in the comment box. I would be happy to let you know how to do that. Or you can find the link in my description box for Chalk Couture and you can check that out there too. So here is the final reveal of all four items. I love them. You'll have to let me know what you think about them and which one was your favorite. And again, thank you all so very much for your support, for subscribing, for watching I and commenting. I love it when you guys comment. I, I feel like it helps me get to know you better. I don't get to see your guys' face. You get to see mine. I don't get to see yours. So it really kind of helps me figure out who you are when you comment and talk with me. And I really appreciate it. So if you're new, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. You guys don't forget to hit that like button. And I will be back on Saturday the 5th with another video. So with all that being said, you guys have a blessed week. Thank you so much for again for your support. And we will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.